Hello everybody. I am Henning Wittrock, one of the doctors working in the clinic Buchinger Wilhelmi in Überlingen, Germany. And I've been working here in this clinic for 10 years now. And we practice integrative medicine and therapeutic fasting. I am specialized in internal medicine, nutritional medicine, orthomolecular medicine, functional, functional medicine and acupuncture. And today I want to give you some important information about uh, different micronutrients, how we can use um, them in order to strengthen our immune system against COVID-19. So my first topic is vitamin D. Vitamin D has a modulating effect on our immune system. It is essential to strengthen both the innate and the acquired part of our immune system. So vitamin D helps our mucosa cells to produce so-called antimicrobial peptides <clears throat> like beta defensins, which have antiviral and antibacterial properties. Furthermore, vitamin D helps to produce higher quantities of specific antibodies against viruses or bacteria. We need vitamin D in order to be able to read more than 100 genes which show us that vitamin D is a hormone. Vitamin D helps to reduce inflammatory intensity, this is very important, by reducing the production and secretion of certain pro-inflammatory cytokines on the one hand side and on the other hand side by increasing the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines and Therefore, vitamin D can be very helpful to reduce the intensity of the so-called cytokine storm, which researchers have observed in COVID-19 patient um, being responsible for circulation problems and in the end for organ failure. And this is what researchers from the Northwestern University from Illinois, USA report. Uh, they say vitamin D prevents our immune system from becoming dangerously overactive. We know that uh, especially people living in the north of the 35th degree of latitude suffer very often of a vitamin D deficiency due to a lack of sun exposure in winter time especially. There are certain results from a so-called ODIN study from 2018, where more than 55,000 Europeans from different countries have been examined. And these results demonstrate that around 80% suffer of a deficiency in vitamin D and around 43% of, of a so-called absolute deficiency of vitamin D. There's a very recent study from Switzerland um, published in the paper Nutrients from on, on the 9th of May 2020 and this study reports a significantly lower vitamin D level in COVID-19 patients whereas people with a negative corona test result uh, have significantly better vitamin D levels. This is the difference of between 11 microgram per liter uh, in case of COVID-19 patients and 24 microgram per liter in negative patients and an optimal level would be around 60 microgram per liter. So there's already a certain protection uh, if we have a good vitamin D level. And uh, there's a clinical study from the United Kingdom published as well now very recently in April this year. And this study concludes that the lower the vitamin D level is, the higher is the mortality from COVID-19 and the number of infected COVID-19 patients. These researchers think that vitamin D is an important factor for the prevention of COVID-19, especially of a severe cause. So there is a certain uh, graph which I can explain to you, where you can see on the right hand side um, patients with a mild development of COVID-19 often show very good vitamin D levels higher than 30 microgram per liter or nanogram per milliliter and on the left hand side the lower uh, or the more severe the 
development of the COVID-19 uh, disease is, the more often we observe very low vitamin D levels. So to find out uh, how many international units of vitamin D3 the individual needs, uh, a blood level of the so-called 25 hydroxy vitamin D level is recommended. This is what we practice here in our clinic with everybody. The target level I mentioned is around 60 microgram per liter or using another unit, 150 nanomole per liter. For using vitamin D in the field of prevention of COVID-19, but as well of other diseases, the general dosage recommendation is between 40 and 60 international units per kilogram body weight. So an adult person of around 70 kilogram of body weight would need three to 4,000 international units per day. And a teenager uh, with half of the weight, like 35 kilogram, would need 1,500 to 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 on a daily basis. My next topic is vitamin A. At least 25% of the Germans have a reduced absorption of vitamin A, respectively the so-called beta carot carotene, which is the pro-vitamin A from plants with their food. Due to genetically caused enzyme defects, it can happen that some people are not able to metabolize the plant-derived pro-vitamin A into the active vitamin A, and this is causing for sure a chronic lack of vitamin A. People at a high risk of developing a vitamin A deficiency are especially small children, pregnant and breastfeeding women, and the elderly. Vitamin A and vitamin D need each other, they depend on each other. Their hormone complexes need to fuse together inside our cells in order to be able to read our genes during the transcription. For the setup of a good immune defense on the mucosa of our respiratory, digestive and urogenital tracts, vitamin A is the most important vitamin. Specialized immune cells are able to return to their original place in the mucosa just with the help of vitamin A which is a process called homing. For using vitamin A in the pre field of prevention, 30 to 50 international units of vitamin A per kilogram body weight are recommended, which means for an adult person of around 70 kilogram, 2,100 to 3,500 international units per day are necessary. For teenagers with half of this body weight, like 35 kilogram, 1,000 to 1,700 international units are necessary. And there are for sure many products containing vitamin A, which are mainly animal derived. On the other hand side, we should not overeat, especially on animal proteins. So we should as well focus on plants and the pro-vitamin A, the beta carotin. And for using vitamin A as a supplement, there are different products. There is the option of using uh, vitamin A rich oil, for example, with 500 international units per drop, or there are capsules. But be, uh, please be cautious, don't overdose, as the vitamin A is a fat soluble substance and an accumulation in our body is possible and will give us uh, negative side effects as well. So please be cautious with the dosage and uh, the easiest way um, is to use plants and the pro-vitamin A uh, using uh, in our food carrots and different types of cabbage, uh, pumpkin and so on. So, and if possible, uh, check your vitamin A level with your doctor and he will tell you if you need to take a higher amount or a normal preventive amount of a supplement. Our next topic is vitamin C. Vitamin C is one of the most important water-soluble antioxidants. I think you know this. Vitamin C is able to reduce the destruction of cell membranes or proteins or DNA, which can happen during oxidative stress, especially 
uh, if we suffer of an infectious disease such as COVID-19. At the same time, vitamin C has anti-inflammatory effects and can help to reduce the so-called cytokine storm during COVID-19, which is the moment of a very strong uh, oxidative stress and inflammation. Vitamin C increases the body's defense in general. Immune cells, which can build up a reserve of vitamin C, uh, contain 10 to 100 fold higher amounts of vitamin C than normal cells. And these cells are able to destroy and eliminate viruses and bacteria. Uh, general preventive dosages of vitamin C uh, is at least 200 milligram per day, uh, better 500 to 1000 milligram per day. For the prevention of COVID-19, we rather recommend more and to take vitamin C not just once a day, but rather twice or three times a day, like two to three times a day, 1000 milligram. Uh, using a uh, buffered uh, vitamin C powder, for example, or a capsule product. There's a lot of experience uh, in using vitamin C for intravenous uh, therapy in case of a common cold or influenza, using vitamin C infusions twice to four times a week, for example, applying 7.5 grams, which means 7,500 milligram of vitamin C, in a physiologic salt solution. And there are studies from intensive care units. So in case of a sepsis uh, patient, for example, on intensive care units, vitamin C infusions are used with a dosage up to 15,000 milligram per day. And uh, these infusions or this therapy has shown to significantly reduce the overall time of artificial respiration and it has reduced uh, treatment complications in general. And in these days, a present study in Wuhan in China uh, studies uh, on a topic regarding COVID-19 patients using 12,000 milligram of vitamin C uh, in, in an intravenous way, twice daily, for a couple of seven days, and we are looking forward, forward to these results. My next topic is uh, the trace element zinc. Zinc, is, uh, zinc has an essential importance for our immune system. Uh, the trace element zinc supports all three lines of defense, such as our mucosa of different organs, the cellular defense, and the specific defense via the production of antibodies. In case of a zinc deficiency, we have a higher susceptibility to infection due to a reduction of our mucosa thickness and our immune cells as specific T helper, T killer, and natural killer cells, especially in our lungs. Zinc has a direct antiviral effect, for example, regarding uh, the defense of renovirus, which, common, uh, which can trigger a common cold. Uh, in this case, zinc can bind to viral surface proteins, inhibiting the virus to penetrate our body cells. So we can use zinc to inhibit the infection of our cells by viruses. There's a big Cochrane meta-analysis of uh, 33 different studies, and this reveals that using zinc supplements significantly helps to reduce the recovery period of patients with viral airway infections. Uh, preventive dosages for adults uh, regarding zinc are 15 to 20 milligram. Children can easily use 5 to 15 milligram per day. And if we have already developed uh, an acute upper airway infection with symptoms like a sore throat, the use of zinc lozenges uh, with 20 to 50 milligram per day is more efficient because the zinc ions are able to neutralize the viruses directly on the surface of our mucosa. There we can use preparations such as zinc gluconate, zinc acetate or zinc citrate.
My next topic is the trace element selenium. Europe is a continent with a known lack of selenium in the ground. Therefore, most people show at least a suboptimal level in their blood and not rarely we find a real selenium deficiency. Most people are not checked on their selenium level on the other hand side, so hardly anybody knows about their selenium level. But selenium is important. Blood levels of less than 100 microgram per liter lead to a weakness of the immune defense. An optimal level is around 140 to 160 microgram per liter, measuring in the full blood. The body needs selenium for many different enzymes, for example, to build up one very important uh, antioxidative enzyme, which is called glutathione peroxidase. If we have a viral infection like influenza and at the same time suffering of a selenium deficiency, a high oxidative stress is or will be the consequence. This oxidative stress is able to trigger mutations of the influenza virus RNA, so the genetic information of this virus, leading to a more aggressive cause of this disease. A too high selenium level, on the other hand side, leads to an inhibition of an enzyme called ACE, which leads to a high production of ACE2 receptors. This is a presence of uh, studies at the moment. These ACE2 receptors were found to enable the coronavirus to infect our body cells. For this reason, we should not overdose selenium with supplements. So there again, it's important and highly recommendable. Let your doctor check your uh, individual selenium level and he will be able to tell you if you need a supplement or if you need to eat selenium rich foods such as brazil nuts or sea fish for example a preventive dosage of around about 100 microgram on a daily basis will uh, never be too much for a normal weight adult person up to 200 microgram might be quite safe but uh, please don't take more without knowing your selenium level So my next topic is the field of omega-3 fatty acids. From the so-called marine omega-3 fatty acids, so the omega-3 fatty acids which we find in um, organisms living in our oceans, um, our body is able to produce anti-inflammatory tissue hormones called eicosanoids and potent cell protecting anti-inflammatory compounds such as resolvents and protectants and others. These protectants, for example, are needed to activate immune cells such as macrophages, which are able to destroy viruses and bacteria. Chinese researchers have recently discovered that the so-called protecting D1 weakens the viral replication. And this is an important uh, factor for a milder cause of a viral disease. So we should always have enough um, omega-3 fatty acids. The so-called uh, long-chain omega-3 fatty acids or marine omega-3 fatty acids called EPA and DHA support as well a healthy intestinal flora. The latter being very important for our immune system as well. Omega-3 fatty acids have many more crucial functions for our health, especially for our brain function, like for our cognition and a good mood, and preventing cardiovascular disease like heart attack, stroke, heart rhythm disorder and high blood pressure. For a good primary prevention of degenerative diseases, it is recommendable to everybody to take a good amount of omega-3 fatty acids as a supplement. Um, and this supplement can consist of a purified uh, fish oil or an, a vegan possibility, which is an algae oil. A preventive dose for adults 
is between two and four gram of EPA and DHA per day for children uh, half of this dose like one to two gram and we can get as well here a good orientation of the patient's uh, individual um, constitution of omega-3 fatty acids in our cell membranes we can check the so-called omega-3 index and this omega-3 index should be between 8 and 11 percent this is what uh, evidence-based cardiology has uh, taught us so the cardiologists recommend to have such a good omega-3 index most people which i check here coming from middle europe or other western countries just show a omega-3 index between four and six percent The next important topic is not a vitamin, nor is it a trace element or a mineral. It is a hormone, the human sleeping hormone called melatonin. Scientists have found out that with age, the body own production of melatonin decreases, leading to a reduced antioxidative effect at night and a reduced regeneration during our sleep. Children, for example, have tenfold higher melatonin blood levels than adults. Researchers talk about light pollution. If bright white and blue light enters our eyes in the evening, because they know about the consequence of a reduced melatonin production due to this light pollution. So we need especially, or we can use melatonin uh, in order to reduce inflammatory intensity. And this is especially important again, once we would develop a, a COVID-19 infection or any other viral infection. A preventive dose of a healthy adult person can be quite low using 0.2 up to 0.5 milligram, taking one tablet at night, like 30 to 60 minutes before you sleep. Um, if you have a higher demand, uh, like if you suffer of a sleep disorder or an inflammatory disease, or uh, if we want to treat the cytokine storm of COVID-19, uh, doctors will tell you to use more, like 10 to 20 milligram per day. My last topic for today is um, our healthy microbioma or our healthy intestinal flora. As I mentioned, the coronavirus infects our cells, especially those cells that show the ACE2 receptor. And as well in the intestinal tract, we find these ACE2 receptors and they are as well present for sure in the lungs, in blood cells. Uh, kidney cells, but as well in our digestive tract. So the digestive tract can be a way of infection. And this is why uh, 20 to 30 percent of all COVID-19 patients uh, develop as a symptom uh, diarrhea, which is due to a functional uh, or a loss of function of these intestinal mucosa cells due to the viral infection. So we know nowadays that there are many protective gut bacteria, such as bifidobacteria, lactobacillus, and enterococcus. And these bacteria stimulate our immune cells to produce more of a certain weapon we have in our defense, uh, the so-called secretory immunoglobulin A, S-I-G-A. Um, these are antibodies which are put on top of our mucosa cells and in this way these, uh, they, these antibodies can uh, neutralize viruses or bacteria if they pass by at the mucosa. Um, to support a intestinal flora we need a healthy nutrition for sure uh, which should be rich in plants or a plant-based diet because plants uh, contain a big variety of so-called fibers and these fibers uh, is the normal food for our protective bacteria and out of these fibers these bacteria 
form so-called short chain fatty acids like acetic acid, um, lactic acid or butyric acid. And these short chain fatty acids are crucial for our intestinal mucosa cells to nourish them, so to enable them to produce their normal cellular energy and to survive. Um, to find out if we have a healthy composition of the intestinal flora, we can perform a very modern stool analysis called microbioma analysis. And if we would find a disbalance there of our intestinal flora, we can use different products like probiotics or prebiotics. Prebiotics are the different types of fibers. Uh, and we might use as well anti-inflammatory plant extracts if we would observe an inflammation tendency on the mucosa uh, cell layers. And this could be, for example, curcumin. Curcumin from the turmeric root is, is shown as well to be protective against viral infections. So I hope that you found some information, some interesting information from my presentations about these different micronutrients. So I can really recommend to everybody to let your doctor check some of these important vitamin or micronutrient uh, levels and to uh, consider maybe as well a microbioma analysis to know if you have a healthy situation inside your body and one important message is, so I was showing you some possibilities which you can use uh, for your own health uh, to prevent uh, any kind of viral infection. So we uh, don't need just to wait for the next coronavirus vaccination, but we are able to start protecting our health now. All the best to you. Take care. Goodbye.